Welcome back to part three of our series where we are discussing mail, mer mail, mail merge from Word VBA. God, I could not say that word today. So in our previous video, we went a little bit more in depth with the whole data source object and just different components of it. We saw that there's different objects that exist inside of a data source, things like field names. Um, we have data fields. And we've also seen that there's other properties we can get about it. So we can get the name of the data source, a connection string, a query string, record count, lots of good information. We also talked a little bit about some of the bugs that kind of come along with this particular topic and doing things like find a record that actually, uh, at least for me, it was, it did lead to a bug in my code, it looks like, and it caused my uh, Word application to crash. So what we're gonna do in this video is we are going to basically move on to the next portion, which is we're gonna actually execute a mail merge. Once we've created some content on our particular Word document, we're gonna use that kind of as like our template and we're gonna actually execute a mail merge. So we're gonna take our data source and we're gonna go through the process of filling in our different fields with the specified value in the record like we've seen so far. And so, I will tell you that there's a big portion of this code that's literally just typing text, and I'm not gonna put everybody through that process of me typing a bunch of text that literally is just going to be on the Word document, but uh, I will be copying that over. So just be ready for that one. We will still discuss what is going on there, but we're not gonna be writing all of that code. And like always, all this code is always available on GitHub, so feel free to copy it and all that fun stuff. But really, um, uh, what we're trying to do here is we are going to uh, mimic uh, recreating this document that we're seeing as is, and then we're going to insert the different fields. So you can see right here that these are actually actually uh, fields from our data source. Now, I, I will talk a tiny, tiny bit just about the different ways we can insert. Um, we're not going to cover that in this video, but at some point we will cover this topic in a little bit more detail. However, Really for this video, we just wanna focus on inserting the fields from our data source. So just be ready for that. Okay, so with that being said, let's jump into our Visual Basic Editor. So you wanna to go to your Developer tab and then Visual Basic. And then from here, I'm assuming you already have a module created. We're gonna create a new subroutine in that module and we will call this uh, Execute Mail Merge. So nothing too complicated. Like our previous video, a lot of the variables that we're gonna be defining, we've already done that. So let's just make our lives easier and copy some existing code that we already have. So I'm gonna copy the code that I have right here and I'm just gonna paste it down here and I'm gonna get rid of the ones that we, we really don't need. I don't need that. I want my application, I want my document and I want my mail merge object. Now, the first thing that I do in this particular script is I actually delete all the existing content that is on my Word document. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to delete all of the existing content on my documents. This is actually not too hard to do. It's pretty straightforward, at least for Word. You take your document object. There is a content property that represents all the content on your document. Guess what? There is a delete method. So that will delete all the content on your document. So you went from your document, you grab the content, you delete that content. And then from here, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the beginning of our document because we're going to start writing some text after we go to the beginning. So just say, for example, I was down here, I'm going to delete the content first, and then I'm going to make sure that my cursor is all the way at the front, basically right here. Technically, I think it's supposed to do it when you do it like that, but I like to be a little bit safe and just make sure that I explicitly write it in the code. It might not be entirely necessary, but I like to do it to be safe. So go to the beginning of our document. We're gonna take our word app in this example. We're gonna call that selection property that represents the current selection inside of our document. That one has a home key method. And then from here, we can specify where we are going. So we're gonna to go to the home 
key. So we're going to basically go to the beginning of our story, if you want to think about it. This is kind of an interesting little, I guess, method or property. If you want to take a look at it, it's it's actually interesting. There's a lot you can actually do with this. So moves or extends the selection to the beginning of the specified unit. So go to the beginning, go to the end, something. This method returns an integer that indicates the number of characters the selection was actually moved, or it returns zero if the move was unsuccessful. This method corresponds to functionality of the home key. So this is like you print the home, or sorry, you select the home key on your particular document. So nothing super complicated, but again, an important step. At this point, this is where I'm gonna copy the code that I already have written for us, and we will just discuss a little bit about what is in it. It's nothing too complicated, but I like to make sure that we're all on the same page. So the first thing that you're gonna notice is I have a bunch of points where I am taking the current selection and I'm calling the type text method. And so with the type text method, each, uh, well, at least with this particular one, uh, you can see here, it has one parameter called text, and then it's just simply a string that you want to type. And so you can kind of see here, literally all I'm doing is I'm just recreating all the content that you are currently seeing on the document. Nothing too complicated, hopefully. And then later throughout, you'll see that there are these type paragraphs. So that's just basically me going to a new line. Um, and then additionally, probably the most important part is you notice here that I take my mail merge object, I go into the fields collection, guess what? That has an add method along with a lot of other add methods. <laughs> oh, sorry, I had to sneeze, excuse me. Okay, so you can see here, there's lots of different add methods. These basically insert different types of fields. That's at least how I would like to explain it. Um, in our particular example, we're just adding a field from our data source. So we're not doing any of the fancy um, add ones. We're just simply adding a field from our data source. And so when we do that, you can see here that there is range and then name. So range represents the, the word range or basically the range on your Word document that you want to insert the field in. And then next is you need to specify the name of the field that you want to insert. So in this case, I'm going to insert my first name, and then I'm gonna start writing some more text, and then I'm gonna insert another field. Very similar, I'm just changing the field that I am inserting. Next, I add another field after doing some more typing. Finally, I add another field, do some more typing, and that's basically it. So in a nutshell, if I was to run this as is, what would that look like? It basically looks like that. So it's just recreating all the text. And you can see here that these each represent a different component. I mean, you could do some really fancy stuff if you wanted to. You could actually maybe do things like bold, stuff like that. I mean, it, it, we've seen this in previous videos too. I mean, there's a lot you can do with Word documents. It's a very extensive object model. In the, in the form of you know being able to modify content inside of it. But once we've done that, we can now move on to the next portion, which is we're gonna actually run the mail merge. So now run the mail merge. From here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say with word mail merge, wanna make sure it's spelled correctly, and with, there's a couple of things that you know might be helpful when you're running your mail merge. You can actually simulate running the mail merge and then if there's any errors, they are returned back to you. Uh, the way you would do this is you would run the check method. So uh, simulate running the mail merge and return any errors that were encountered. How do you do that? It's literally one little method and that's it. No parameters, nothing like that. Um, additionally, there's some other things that you could do on your document if you want it to make it more apparent to the user which uh, parts of your document represent fields and stuff like that. So something you can also do 
is you can highlight the fields in the document. Well, how do you do that? It's very simple. You take the highlight merge fields property and you set that to true. Additionally, you can also see the either the raw value or the raw field name. So we can set, we can see either the values false or the field names true. Well, how do you do that? Very simple. You go into the view mail merge field codes. And then for this one, if you want to see the field names, you would put true. Let's see what everything looks like when we run it. So here we notice that now it's highlighted. That's reflected here. You can kind of see that it's, it's highlighting it. What else can we do? Well, what if I put this to false? What if I put that to false? What happens then? So now it's like I'm pressing the preview results button on our ribbon. Now also keep in mind, we were running a check each time. So that's pretty nice. That makes our lives a lot easier. Additionally, I'm gonna specify two more properties and then I'm going to execute it. I guess one more property and then actually run the method. So first I'm going to specify the destination. This is important because this is going to specify where your the results of your merge go. Do you want it to go to a document? Do you want it to go to the printer? Do you want it to go to a, uh, a file or a PDF kind of in a sense, if you, I guess if you want to think of it like that. So I can specify the destination using that property. I can email it, fax it, new document or a printer. So in this situation, I want it to go to a new document, a new Word document. And then next, I'm going to execute the mail merge and also don't pause for errors. What does that mean? Well, I'm gonna call my execute method and there's a single parameter, it's called pause. Do you want me to pause for errors or do you not want me to pause for errors? In this case, I do not want you to pause for errors because we've already checked it and it should have been caught here. So in this situation, I don't need to pause. But if I had it for true, if an error was encountered, guess what? It's going to pause and it's gonna prompt you that there's an error. So at this point, you actually have everything you need in order to run your mail merge. So let's do it. Look at that. So we got our first one, our second one, and then our third one. So we successfully executed our mail merge all from VBA. And with that being said, we've actually reached the end of our video. So if you have any questions about executing a mail merge using Word VBA, by all means, put them down in the comments below. Otherwise, in our next video, we're probably gonna go through a couple more different types of fields that we can insert into our document and explain where those might be uh, useful, for example. Uh, also, if you didn't notice here, you can also do a PDF merge as well if you want. But yes, that's what we're gonna be having upcoming in our new video related to mail merge. But again, if you have any questions, by all means, put them down below. Otherwise, we will see you in the next video.